This is the story of an encounter between two young men who shared a passion for entrepreneurship and innovation. This is the story of a small startup company in Palo Alto, California that became one of the largest IT companies in the world. This is the story of a company that gave birth to America's Silicon Valley. This is the story of William Hewlett and David Packard. Born in Ann Arbor, Michigan in May 20th, 1913, William Hewlett and his family moved to San Francisco after his father was offered a faculty position at Stanford Medical School. Suffering from severe dyslexia, Hewlett had a very unsuccessful early academic career as he had a hard time with written assignments. On the other hand, his illness led him to develop exceptional memorization and logical skills that made him excel in areas of mathematics and science. These skills helped Hewlett gain entry into Stanford University in 1930. Around the same time of Hewlett's birth, David Packard flashed into existence in Pueblo, Colorado on September 7, 1912. At an astonishingly young age, Packard showed his interests in science and electricity, and he shocked his parents and teachers by building his first radio in elementary school. After graduating from a local public high school, Packard enrolled as an electrical engineering student at Stanford the same year as Hewlett. At Stanford, Hewlett and Packard pursued their interests in science and engineering, and coincidentally both enrolled in Stanford's highly acclaimed electronics class, which at the time was known as radio engineering. There, the two young men met each other for the first time. Both avid doorsmen with an insatiable fascination for electronics, the two quickly became friends, spending many weekends camping and fishing in the wilds of the Colorado mountains. Eventually, the two friends enrolled together in the undergraduate engineering classes taught by Professor Fred Terman, who was a renowned engineering professor at Stanford. One day, Terman suggested to his two brightest students the idea of one day starting their own company, and Hewlett and Packard agreed. Fred Terman developed the premier electrical engineering department in the world. In the course of doing that, encouraged his own students, Hewlett and Packard, to develop companies. And sure enough, in the year of 1939, Hewlett and Packard, with the help of their professor and mentor Fred Terman, established their own company with an initial investment of $538. And after the famous coin toss to decide whether the company would be called Hewlett Packard or Packard Hewlett, HP was born in a one-car garage behind Packard's Palo Alto house. HP is Bill Hewlett and David Packard. The two companies were founded in 1938. Today, we know the Silicon Valley of the world. IT의 상징이라고 하는 실리콘밸리가 HP가 처음으로 회사를 만든 그곳이기 때문에 HP가 실질적으로 실리콘밸리의 1호 기업이라고 여러분들이 이해하시면 되겠습니다. After founding HP, Hewlett and Packard started to explore the area in which engineering, science, and business came together. The two friends spent hours every day trying to come up with innovative products to sell and came across their first major invention in the winter of 1939 when they created an audio oscillator, which they named the HP 200A. Audio oscillators were devices that generated one frequency of sound at a time and could be used for a variety of things, mainly for testing sound equipment. However, they were extremely complex, expensive, and prone to distortion. To fix this problem, Hewlett had invented an audio oscillator that utilized a small light bulb to maintain a nearly constant output of sound and frequency. This innovation revolutionized the audio oscillator industry, and HP was able to produce their oscillators at a remarkable price of $54.40, when the average price of an oscillator was $600. Soon after the release of the HP 200A, Hewlett and Packard struck gold when Walt Disney recognized the huge benefits of their product and gave HP its first big purchase with an order of eight audio oscillators to be used in its newest film, Fantasia. What got Hewlett Packard really going was the first big order, and that came from Walt Disney for the movie Fantasia. Furthermore, with the outbreak of World War II in 1939 and America's entry in 1941, the US government developed a heavy demand for HP's audio oscillators, which were needed to test military equipment. What began as a trickle of orders turned into a stream, then a flood, 
which boosted company sales to nearly $1 million by the year 1943. By the end of the war, HP had grown into a sizable company recognized throughout the US with new manufacturing plants and more than 200 employees. Even after this initial success, Hewlett and Packard continued to explore the possibilities of innovation. In 1971, Hewlett and Packard challenged their co-workers to create a pocket-sized scientific calculator. Bill challenged his engineers to build this thing and, and make it the size of his shirt pocket. That was kind of a, oh my god, I don't think we can possibly do that. By the year 1972, however, the engineers at HP, with the help of Hewlett and Packard, had succeeded and presented to their bosses the HP 35. Despite its high cost, the HP 35 turned out to be so popular that HP couldn't make them fast enough. By this time, HP sales were skyrocketing and the company has certainly become the next biggest IT company in America. But as their history shows us, Hewlett and Packard were not only explorers of innovation, but also explorers of new styles of company management that revolutionized how companies were run in the late 20th century. The norm of company management at the time was one of extreme rigidity and strictness. Bosses kept a tight watch on their employees and basic elements of trust and autonomy were rarely found inside the office. Seeing no room for creativity and innovation under such a harsh system, Hewlett and Packard wished to create an optimal work environment where employees could freely voice their opinions without fear of being punished. And at the end of their search, the HP way was born, which encompassed the unique ways in which HP was run and managed. The first aspect of the HP way was a company management style pioneered by Hewlett and Packard called management by walking around. Under this type of management, the boss would simply wander around the office and answer any questions or concerns from the employees. Furthermore, the employers would give their ultimate trust and autonomy to their employees to finish their tasks. This was a revolutionary style of company management as no other company at the time provided such freedom to its employees. The essence of the HP way, top management sets the overall objective and then gets out of the way and lets the people do it. If the first aspect of the HP way was providing employees with freedom and autonomy to complete their tasks, the second aspect was to facilitate the exchange of ideas and words within the HP empire at all levels of the company structure. To achieve this, Hewlett and Packard implemented the open door policy, which included many initiatives like no walls or doors in offices, addressing everyone by their first names, and regular parties for employees to socialize with each other and their bosses. Such policies, combined with Hewlett and Packard's genuine respect for employees, turned HP into more of a family than a company. And within the HP family, all employees were willing to speak their minds and everyone, including the managers and CEOs, were as willing to hear everyone's voices. I believe it's very important that people have some part in making the decisions that they're going to be involved with. And thanks to this policy, the exchange of ideas and words had never been easier at HP and it allowed the company to quickly expand and grow to become one of the most influential and prosperous companies of the 20th century. And as HP globalized, it became recognized worldwide as a company that truly respects its employees, and numerous companies and corporations around the world, ranging from Samsung to Apple, adopted the HP way. HP is known to almost be the best employer in the early days, and it has a very strong um, culture, as in the trust on the employee is very high. What had started out as a promise between two Stanford colleagues to create their own startup led to the creation of a $100 billion company. From printers to digital cameras to tablet computers, Hewlett Packard today offers hundreds of high-tech products that bring convenience and joy to its customers. Furthermore, by teaching HP employees the basics of entrepreneurship, and fundamentals of the HP way, Hewlett and Packard sold way for the creation of Silicon Valley, as many of these bright employees left HP and founded their own companies. By seeding the valley with some of the greatest talents, William Hewlett and David Packard certainly gave rise to America's IT industry as we know it today.